As you can see we have this really beefed up guy and he is pretty mad that somebody hasn't returned the books he's supposed to be returning so he just smashed those guys into a pulp. And that is actually kind of good looking already and this is what we're gonna do with surfaces. Of course you can smash other stuff but for now we're just gonna be smashing some um, of those guys and I just show you how you do that with the blood and with the smear because these are two things which are gonna be part of this tutorial and this is it. So how does this look like in practice? Basically we just have our room here placed in all the instances which are those little guys here, those trees and the bookshelf and so on. They are just instances and you can smash them and once they are destroyed well they just spawn some stuff. So what do we have over here? Um, our basic camera as far as I can. Yep, that's the camera from the other tutorials. So I can just zoom in and just show you some stuff. And the other thing is we just have a surface over here, which we did in the last video. So if you don't know that, I just give you a very quick overview. Basically what we just do, we create a surface and do it with the properties of the room width and height. And once we destroy it, we free it and all the time we draw on the surface if it does exist. And this is just it. So if you know about surfaces in my last video, you know what to expect. Basically we just plant it over here and then it will stick around and draw all our stuff we want. Okay, so what do else do we need? First of all, I have two sprites, which are this little blood rubble sprite and this is gonna be the first thing which we're just gonna fly off once the instance is destroyed and then we have a little smaller sprite which is just one of those few things here and it will just create this smear so you have two things and for those two things I have created two instances which are called rubble parent and smear parent um, why did I do it with parents? well because I want to create once all the logic inside of them and then we can for example go for for blood for some other stuff and we just do um, very few things like this for example we just say okay we everything is being inherited and we just assign it a different sprite which we want to take and this is basically it all right so let's go directly into our rubble parent and we have of course to delete all that stuff because I have to show you Okay, get lost and here we just need three things our step our create and our destroy event and We start with our create event because here we put in all our stuff. So first of all we need The image speed, but this is um, you can manually do that if you like but I like I prefer to do it like this so the image speed is zero and these things are just assigning um, the sprite which we take here and then we give it some random values so it looks nicer. So for example we just go for our image index and assign it to a random value. I don't want to type all that stuff in so I just do like this. And this code just means alright I'm taking the image index and assign it uh, between a zero index and its full number because the number will be like one number higher that's why we always have to subtract one as we get an error because well you're being out of the index there all right then the next thing is you can do that of course or skip that if you don't like that but I'll prefer to do that so I can go between some values because our sprites I don't want to, to show our sprite all the time um, just one of those I want to do dynamically change it so in the creation we just go for a smaller value between those two and then um, it creates dynamically different ones so it appears that you have different kind of blood splatters which is kind of neat and again and another thing is for example the image angle you don't have to change you don't have to apply that but for me I just go give it a lot of random values so it appears better and not too static. All right, these values should be pretty clear and now we go for the more interesting part which I guess you have come here for the movement because 
once the rubble is being um, created it needs to go somewhere so first of all we just say all right we want to go for a different direction and here we just go for a random value I just copy pasted all that stuff because then it's easier so we just go for our I random range and then we just go, can go full circle from the place of origin all right and next we define two values I don't know I just call them extra but you can call them whatever you like these values are just to assign where to go and here if you watch my other videos we go for a length deer but this is just an but this is an advanced video so you know how to do that if you don't know how length deer works just go to my laser tutorial there I explain it in detail and these things we use for um, defining our movement which I will go into the step event later on this value is just a random one you can I don't know go for 100 or whatever you like but the, basically this is just saying okay from our origin to the direction we just go randomly so we have like for example um, this point is an origin and then direction says all right I want to have like a degree of what is this zero so 45 is over here so it says 45 so we just assign this point and then we take with the length there and get those parameters which are not on the origin but of the point we assigned randomly here and these values we will be using for our movement and how do we move well basically we just take and go for move towards point in my other tutorials i showed this in detail so you should be knowing that stuff as well and we go x extra and y extra and all those points um, defined where this thing is moving next thing we need a speed and that we go for i don't know for a random value again um, i don't use the speed value because this is an inbuilt so i use uh, another one which is just which we can control so here i just go for a random range and this is a value you have to change for your game because for for my game or for this demonstration it works pretty nice but for example if you don't want to have such a high splatter because splatter is pretty 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 long but for this demonstration it it looks already good all right this speed we can take and put it into our step event and then it would be moving towards this point but for now well we don't want it to go indefinitely into one direction that's why we just say all right we need to have a sort of mechanic that can stop it so how do we do that we just go and define here our speed value and decrease it all the time and if it decreases too much well then it stops and then if it almost stops we need to destroy it so how do we do that we just go for for example a very very small value and we decrease it all the time and, it, and if the speed value is smaller than let's say 0.1 we want it to destroy itself we do that with an instant destroy method and then we are pretty much done for example now this could almost work but it's not drawing so how do we do that if you have seen my other tutorial on surfaces we do just exactly what we did last time so we just can copy the sole code and put it in just go over here so if you don't know how this works just go to my basic tutorial on surfaces this is exactly the same code i'm just g repeating it very quickly basically we just have saying basically what we do is just checking if the surface is existing then we say all right draw to our target which is our surface then we take all the values from the sprite assigned from the object itself which the um child objects have for the parent it does not have any because it doesn't need any then we just reset the surface and if it doesn't exist well create this surface this is how it works 
So basically we could just start the game and it should already work. Let's see if it does. So our guy is coming up. Come on faster. And he's really mad and it's time to smash. Yep, and it does work. And as you can see now, um, we only have those blood splatters which are going to this side. Which already looks good, but as you, as you can see here, the blood is on top of everything, which we really don't want. And that's why, for example, we create another layer of instances and call it, I don't know, surface and put it below all the instances. And now we need to take our surface object, kill it because we don't want to have it on the instances, we want to have it on where are you? Come on, come on, come on. I want to have it on the layer of the surface layer. So we just put it in here. And now it would work. The next thing we want to do is to do a little smear. So how do we do that? Basically, we just go back in in our rubber parent object, which is just doing its thing. And we want to spawn from time to time some little um, blood splatters and then they need to destroy itself so we just go for an extra value and call it smearing okay no and set it to false true it doesn't matter false so we just set it to to false but when we for example spawn our blood piece we say, all right, we want some smearing, so we can use that. Let's go back to our rubble parent. And here we just define a switch, which I do a lot of, lot of times in my videos. So I just go and create a timer. And this timer um, does it every three steps. So basically every second you have like 20 of those being done, so you can do a lot of smearing and a lot of instances are being created but then destroyed already um, once they're being created so you can do this splatter effect like this and how do we apply that well basically we just say um, once our timer is running down and it hits zero we just go and create a smear or basically just this other blood object which I'm gonna show you in a few seconds so here we go copy that stuff and it, so it just resets and there we create our object but not on instances but on surfaces uh, no, this is something wrong. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, we just take our smear blood object. And our smear blood object I haven't shown you for now because this is a, a child of the smear parent. The smear parent is almost the same as the rubble parent and that's why um, there's not much to tell you. Basically, this is just almost the same. So you just take some values which you want to change, for example the image speed, we don't want to scroll through the um, stuff, then a random index, then the scale maybe a little smaller or bigger, because it's very small so we cannot do too much of a deviation of the original um, size, and then an image angle, and then we instantly destroy it when it's there, so, and well, this is basically it. So when we destroy it, same code, we just go and say, okay, we want, we need a target, then we just extract all the information of our sprite, then we draw the sprite on that, and if it doesn't, if we don't have the surface, create one. This is basically it. So for example, if we go into our child object, which is here, what do we have? Well, nothing. We have already here something assigned and then it should already work. So let's see if I forgot something. 
I guess not. Let's check it out. Yep, yes, and it works. This is it. This is how the whole thing works. You just smash some stuff with this angry dude and smashing, destroying shit. And, well, this is how you do it for a top down game. But for now, this should be sufficient for you. And so, everything you need to know how you create this kind of stuff and just create all these nice, cool effects and just litter the screen with all this stuff. And just one thing, maybe. Um, for you to know but it's not really essential for example if we destroy our little enemy which is just this guy with the glasses we just say all right go for a random amount and just repeat and just create those little blood pieces which we just defined over here yep and that was it of course patreon supporters get the whole project in a little advanced form with lots of well, sprites and mechanics um, as a bonus. Have a good one. One up indie.